we need to update our nuclear triad on land, in sea, and on air. Uh, but that also includes the Iron Dome. Iron Dome or Golden Dome, whatever you want to call it, uh, we have embraced the executive order of President Trump. Uh, we're going to ensure it's included in reconciliation money, in the FY26, all our budgets going forward, to invest in the ability, Maria, get this, novel idea, to defend our homeland. That's why we're focusing on our southern border and the invasion there, the 100 percent operational control, and then our skies. And that was Defense Secretary Pete Hegseth with me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures discussing the modernization of the Defense Department and President Trump's executive order for the construction of the Iron Dome for America, a missile defense shield similar to Israel's Iron Dome. Joining me now is U.S.-Israel Education Association senior policy advisor and rocket scientist Ari Sacher. Ari, good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. You've worked in the Israeli Thank defense industry for more than 30 years. You've served on the core team of many groundbreaking systems, including that Iron Dome. President Trump told me he's probably going to call it something else, something like the Golden Sphere or, or, or Golden Dome. Tell me how this works and uh, a little about the Iron Dome that is used right now in Israel, sir. So let me tell you at the outset, uh, the president is using the term Iron Dome as a, as a metaphor. Iron right. Dome, as you had on the previous slide, that defends small areas, city-sized areas against uh, threats that are launched from about 40 miles away. So it's perfect for defending Israel from Gaza, Lebanon. Um, it, it is not something that the United States needs very much. The United States has a small, uh, a small number of batteries of Iron Dome. And that defends deployed forces. But to defend the U.S. homeland, as the president wants to do, you need something completely different. You're defending against rockets not launched from Canada or Mexico, or not that I know of, but you're defending against rockets that are launched from North Korea, from China, from it's Russia, awesome. well, potentially. And you need something far more complex than Iron Dome to shoot it down. What the president is looking at is something that probably would be called space-based intercept. You bring up a whole bunch of interceptors into outer space, and the whole intercept would take place outer space. So if you want to call it Iron Dome or you want to call it FRED, it doesn't make a difference. It's not Iron Dome. But the oh, chances of it succeeding are excellent. So the U.S. Yeah. has a tremendous amount of engineers and gumption. That is amazing. Thank you for that explainer, Ari. So when you look at what that would be able to handle, you're talking about something that would be able to protect America from rockets as far as Korea. We're talking about Korea and points west. China's even farther. That's the threats America has to look at, are near-peer threats. Things like uh, Gaza and Hezbollah, that's just too small. That's, that's minor league, United States yeah. of America. And, and, and do you think that the U.S. has the capabilities to come up with something to handle uh, those, those threats as far as China? Um, you said that, you know, it would be much different than what Israel has for those very reasons. Tell me about the engineering that goes into something like that. Well, I'll tell you, I worked, I worked together with Raytheon. I was actually the, the, the manager of Raytheon from our, from our company and um, in, in a project called David Sling. And Raytheon did a whole bunch of meaningful stuff. They designed a computer. They designed a whole bunch of other stuff. They have a tremendous cadre of scientists there. That was about uh, 10 years ago. I don't believe anything has changed. The United States has some amazing scientists. And if the government decides to fund this to, the, um, to, to, the, to, to how much is necessary, then you guys are going to do something that's going to blow everything out of the water. I have absolutely no, no suspicion otherwise. I love it. Wow. You know what I'm thinking is, is, is whether or not this is going to spawn a whole new group of investors uh, investing in, you know, related things, related technology. We've talked a lot about drones, and we will watch the drone industry. Andrel Industries is, of course, an important American drone maker. But with regard to the actual other defense items or technology that could be used around something like this, Ari, tell me about that. Do you think this spawns a whole new investment on the public side to invest in defense technology? Oh, absolutely, because there's a whole new slew of technologies that yes. are needed 
to um to 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 do this sort of thing. Most difficult one is, believe it or not, not the interceptor. It's not the uh, the launcher. The most difficult thing is even not getting it into outer space. The most difficult thing is controlling everything. Is understanding what we call a sky picture. You got to know when you're shooting a, an Iron Dome. You got to know who's firing on you, how many, which is a good guy, which is a bad guy. What's that triple seven landing at the airport? Can't shoot that down. But imagine doing all of that in outer space. And there's so much more to take care of, and there's so much more that could go wrong, and you have to take account of all these things. If you can solve that problem in outer space, then you can use it on the ground for a whole bunch of other control problems, controlling fires, controlling electric grids, yeah. controlling everything. That's the secret. Control. I love it. I love it. And and when you look at why, you know, companies like Palantir have been so uh, so successful, this is why, because they have been able to find the right investments into defense technology that have become incredible growth stories. So thank you for that assessment. I love all of this and where we're going. We're going to keep a spotlight on this on this program in terms of investing around this. But let me get your take on what went on over the weekend. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is praising President Trump as the greatest friend that Israel ever had in the White House. The two leaders, of course, met in Washington last week, and President Trump's State Department notified Congress on Friday about its plans to sell more than $7 billion of new weapons to Israel. Ari, talk to us about the impact of this arms sale, uh, the impact on Israel, as, of course, we saw three more hostages released uh, on Saturday. What a story. They look emaciated and, and horrible after all of their time in captivity. Uh, we hope that these talks are not stalled between Israel and Hamas and we can get the rest of the hostages home. But give us your thoughts on the impact on Israel with this $7 billion arms sale. So let me tell you, someone asked me uh, about a week ago, is the United States giving Israel all the arms it needs in order to defend itself? And my answer was yes, but. But Israel will not win a war only, get a def only getting defensive arm. The United States, since October 23rd, has been providing us with everything we need for air and missile defense. We had, at the beginning, been getting a lot of um, weapons for offense, bombs, uh, uh, precision-guided munitions, missiles. Um, that petered down as the war went on. There became caveats, and we heard a lot of, um, if you guys don't go into Khan Yunus, then such and such will happen. And if you don't go to Rafa, such and there, if you do, there will be penalties to pay. What the Trump administration is doing is it is enabling Israel the weapons that it needs in order to win the war, because there is a difference between not losing a war and winning a war. You win a war by imposing force against the enemy. You impose your will. What we did in Gaza, what we did in, in Lebanon, we pushed the terrorists away. We created a buffer. We cleaned it out. People are moving back. It's a totally different kettle of fish than it was before. And how did we do that? Using large American weapons to clear large areas. We had D-9 bulldozers, American, that led the charge, pushed away IEDs, pushed away people. And with this kind of weaponry, only with this kind of weaponry can we win the war. That's why I'm so excited about what the Trump administration is doing. Well, you're right. I mean, look, I, I don't know what the goal was from the Biden administration, you know, putting all of these limitations on Israel. And by the way, after saying don't go into Rafa, luckily Israel went into Rafa because that's where the terrorists were. Ari, it's good to see you. We have a spotlight on all of that, and we so appreciate your expertise. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.